Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Well, hi to everyone. It's another fantastic day, really beautiful early summer days. Uh, here we are, another Sunday. Um, and we are back with this story of Mr. George Muller, uh, a man whose heart God has set on fire. I've still got my heart picture here. We know how God had taken him from a very dark and empty place as a young man, uh, set his heart on fire, uh, and he's offered his life to God to be used by him. And he's now uh, in his mid-40s, coming up to 50. Um, and we know he's involved in three things now. He's built this amazing orphan house with the donations from all the Christians uh, up on Ashley Down outside Bristol. Uh, he's also sending out hundreds of Bibles across uh, both this country and abroad, uh, thousands of gospel leaflets, and also this wonderful um, narrative that he was writing at the end of every year called Answers to Prayer. And the third thing he was involved with, and we heard about this last year, was in mission work, where he's sending out significant amount of money to missions, um, particularly abroad, particularly in China. He's very involved now with the China Inland Mission, involved with the setting up of it. Um, great friends with um, Hudson Taylor, who was the pioneer working out there. Um, and so... He wrote at that time when all this was happening, he wrote, the Lord pours in while we continue to pour out. Um, and remember, they weren't appealing for money. They weren't, um, they weren't sending out letters or asking people to give money. Uh, they were trusting in God. And as the work grew and the demands for money grew more, uh, they had to trust God more. Um, and uh, I just want to tell of one or two of these wonderful stories of how God answered their prayers. Um, he tells of a desperate November day, which was freezing cold, and there was no money uh, for the orphans that on that day. Um, and he'd been praying, and he gets very cold in his room, and he decides to go out for a walk, and because he's so cold, he walks further than normal, takes longer than normal, and comes back at a different time in a different way. And just as he's reaching his house, he wrote, about 20 yards from my house, a brother met me, a fellow Christian, and he handed me five pounds that day for the orphans. If I had been one half minute later or earlier, I would have missed him. Um, and this was an amazing thing because the man was actually not coming to visit him. He wasn't coming to, to Muller's house. He just happened to be passing by and met him in the street. And God provided that day. There's another wonderful story of financial provision. So many, many stories. But this is one of the ones I love. Um, they'd had some a big repair bill for the orphanage. It was about four years old now, the orphanage on Ashley Down. They had a big repair bill of £100. That's several thousand pounds in our money. And George Muller wrote, I had no prospect that day of getting a hundred pennies, much less a hundred pounds. And it was a Monday when little income usually came in. But I walked to the orphan house and I was praying. And when I got there, I discovered that 301 pounds had been given that morning. So I went to my room and I walked up and down for a long time. Tears of joy and gratitude to the Lord rolled down my cheeks I praised and magnified God for his goodness and offered myself afresh with all my heart to him for his blessed service. So he was given three times more than they needed for that repair bill. And as well as finance that was coming in, there was also um, amazing provision of um, food and clothing and all sorts of things. There's a wonderful story told about one morning. We've got a picture of the dining room at Orphan House Number 1 where they laid the table for breakfast and the matron went to George Muller and said, the children are dressed and they're ready to go to school but we've got no food for their breakfast. What do I do, Mr. Muller? And he said, tell them to come and sit down. So the 300 children all came in, packed round their tables, and he stands in the middle of them and he gives thanks to God for the breakfast. And they must have thought, mm, Mr. Muller, this is really crazy now because there is no breakfast. And then there was a knock at the door. And the baker appeared and he said, I got up early this morning and I just felt that you guys needed bread um, and I bought three large batches of bread and they bought the bread and uh, brought it all in for their breakfast just after that there was a second knock at the door and it was the milkman 
And he said, our wheel is broken. There's a wonderful picture of some old cat carts. This is the way the milk was delivered in those days. Remember, there was no refrigeration. They said, our wheel's broken down. We've broken down out right outside the orphanage. It's going to be a while before we get this mended. The milk is going to go off. Um, do you want some milk, some free milk? And they brought in 10 huge cans of milk. Um, and it was just the right amount for all 300 children uh, to have a drink. Um, a, such an exciting story for the children. It must have been amazing for them to see that. There's another story told. This is quite a famous story of November 1857. Um, the boiler in the orphan house broke down. Uh, they, they, it was working, but only just. They knew there was a problem. Uh, and in those days, a bit like the picture we've got of the boiler, they, they were bricked in. Um, and it was very hard to get to them to mend them. Um, so George Muller prayed two prayers. He said, Lord, could you keep it warm enough that while we put the fire out, um, uh, while they repair it over two or three days, um, that, that it wouldn't be freezing cold? Uh, because at that point there was a really bitter north wind that was blowing um, down across those hills. Um, and he was worried that when they put the fire out, the children were going to be freezing. He was particularly worried about the very little ones. Um, and then he also prayed, God, would you give the workmen who come um, a heart to work? Because he was reading in Nehemiah and he read that verse and he thought, I'm going to pray this, that God would give them a heart to work. On the day when they began the repair and they put the fire out, the direction of the wind changed and this wonderful southerly wind coming up from Portugal and Spain blew up across um, and they didn't even need a fire. They were warm enough, even though it was late November. Um, and over those days, the workmen worked very hard. And on the last day, they hadn't finished. They couldn't relight the fires. And then the foreman came to George Muller and said, look, the men just seem to want to get this done. They said they're going to work through the night to get this finished. And he remembered then what he had prayed. They worked through the night. By the following morning, they got it on and they got the fires going again. Um, but through those days, it had been warm enough uh, and God had provided for them. I love that story. Um, and then also there were times of sickness uh, uh, when disease came. And suddenly at one point in 1866, there was a terrible outbreak of measles. Um, across the country and it reached the orphanage and many of the children became sick and so Muller said I'm going to pray three things he was so specific in how he prayed so he prayed Lord could no children die from this could no children have serious after effects um, and could our little sanatorium our little sick room not be overwhelmed could we have enough um, could we could we have could we be able to cope with the sickness that had come and all three prayers were answered. No children died. None had serious after effects. Um, and they were able to cope in the sanatorium uh, because of God taking care of them. So we might look at all those amazing stories of money and food and provision and repairs and prayers for the weather um, and think, wow, great answers to prayer. But actually, these were these were really serious trials. These were really serious difficulties. Having no money in the bank, um, having no food to give them for breakfast, having big repair bills and um, being worried that the children were going to get too freezing cold and then children being sick. These were real difficulties. But the thing was, Muller saw difficulties in, in the Bible way. He didn't see them the way that we often see them. He didn't have something break down think oh it's a disaster what a nightmare why has God allowed this no instead he'd learnt to bring it to God he saw every trial as an opportunity to see God's provision to see God move he knew his own faith um, and trust in God was being tested um, like the verse that it says in Hebrews in the day of trial don't harden your heart he had learnt not to harden his heart he had learnt to turn to God in those difficulties and that's such a message for us so that when the washing machine breaks down or there's less money in the bank than we would like or um, the car breaks down or there's real difficulties in relationships or sickness has come to us and to our families, we need to turn towards God and not away from him. We need to come and pray to him. He wants to be involved, involved, involved in all of these things. Muller believed that we should pray about everything like the Bible teaches so we need to really learn that in our own lives. I'm, I'm really wanting to learn this in my own heart, my own life. 
And at that time we talked about this last week, he having built this orphanage, he's saying to God, what next? What do we do next? And he's beginning to pray about this. And he hears from a big government report that there are at this time 6,000 orphans being held in prisons across the British Isles. And this distresses him. We've got a picture here. The, the prisons were desperate places. They were desperately cold. There was a lack of food. We've got a picture of some of the children, individual tri- children who were in these prisons. Many of them were orphans. There's another picture here of a group of children. Many of them died in the prisons. Many of them got sick. They didn't have enough to eat. It was bitterly cold. And he began to say, Lord, could we um, build more orphanages Uh, could we see more happen could we do more for these children he first of all prayed could we have another 700 I want to have a thousand orphans up on Ashley Down Um, and in the end they built orphan house number two number three number four and number five holding an average of about three to four hundred in each and by may 1870 there were 1722 children in five orphan houses up on ashley down this was an amazing thing that had happened and it required more and more funds more and more giving more and more prayer um, as they had to care for all these children he's still sending out these narratives year after year and he's becoming known and the work in Bristol was becoming known. People wanted to come and see it and find out about it. People were encouraged in their own faith to think, well, if God could use George Muller, he could use me as well. And so those narratives were going out and we're going to hear next week an amazing story of one of the narratives that went out to another country and of the extraordinary um, impact and effect of that narrative when it fell into the hands of some young people who read it. So we're just going to pray now. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, we worship you today. We worship you, Son of God, Saviour of the world, Living One. Um, We lift up our eyes to you, and Lord, we pray you'd help us to keep our eyes on you. We pray you'd help us during these trials, when there's difficulties, Lord, when there's sickness, uh, when there's problems, Lord. Would you help us to turn not away from you, but towards you, not to harden our hearts so they get icy cold, but to turn towards you. Thank you that you answer prayers, Lord. Thank you that you want to be involved. Thank you you want us to pray about everything. Lord, we pray, would you help us to do that this week? Amen.